<laughs> Greetings. I am Gabriel Paranius Ackner. I am a super soldier with the USSSO, and I've come to talk to you about something that's very important. Are you surrounded by people who believe that your flesh and body was born less sophisticated th than theirs, and that because of that you don't deserve to be treated with the same respect as them, that no matter what you do the reaction is only more hostility, forcing you to feel that you can't even, even think about wanting to retaliate? What you're going through has a name, and that name is superiority. What is superiority? Let's start with the word. What does superiority mean? The word super means above, and iority means... Uh, referring, describing something as being above, or all those things that come or have anything to do with being above. Where did it start? Well, let's first start with the origins of individual wealth, which began here in ancient Sumeria, where a warlord took over and decided, essentially invented the conventional concept of inheritance, deciding that from now on, one's life accomplishments, one's wealth, achievements, knowledge, would not die with them and be wasted, but instead would be inherited by, uh, by offspring giving their offspring an advantage over any others that could not be gained in a single lifetime. This is the inceptional, the seminal event of superiority. <laughs> See what happened next. <laughs> Another event that contributed to superiority was the infantilization of humanity, which began around the domestication of hominid kind. Mm, 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 mm. See, in the times long before, life was harsh, and this environment forged, forged small, but strong, and scary, and harsh men. <laughs> However, as civilization grew, and contacts between living hominid beings grow, grew greater, the necessity for a being that was softer to the less aggressive, as well as easier on the eyes, became more necessary. And as soon as living beings began to not complete the maturation process into a being with a snout, adult hominid beings have snouts, and remained somewhat infant-like for the remainder of their lives, both physically and mentally, this allowed our kind to retain some of the abilities to compel others as they would treat a baby to give them certain more good treatment than they would give to someone otherwise. Oh, look at the little baby! Not a baby! Oh, the baby! And those who didn't couldn't compete. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Infantilization then proceeded to take the world by storm. In fact, we haven't seen a fully grown hominid a uh, member of our species in over 10,000 years. Mm, 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 mm. The jowls are the beginning of a snout, and we, in essence, gave up our adulthood in order to use the looks of a baby to score chicks. Let's see what else contributed to inferior superiority. One of the next things to contribute to superiority, I must admit myself I had to do a bit of research on, it was geography. See, the mountains of Europe were a perfect crucible for ingenuity, for man's natural savage tendency to want to conquer, destroy, and intimidate, oppress, and dominate their neighbors was intervened by the geography of the landscape. Armies had a really hard time moving around and oppressing each other, however, were not an, obstruct an obstruction that was completely insurmountable, allowing occasionally for them to hurt enough of each other to destroy the weak, but maintain several hostile powers at once, making ensuring that one ruler's mistake didn't become everyone's mistake. Whereas, let's for instance say, 
in China, where there is homogeneity, or in Africa, where there is hyperdiversity. Europe was just right, and thus we uh, control things. Mm -mm 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 -mm. In a situation like there was in Europe, where there were many option, options for someone to gain power or superior, superiority over others, where if once you didn't succeed, there was always another option. And that created, that was a hotbed for individual wealth. And with individual wealth came individual rights to protect that elite wealth. And as followers are one to do, they, everyone adapts their feelings to serve that authority, which remains extant to this day. Resulting in the individualistic narcissism of Western society, it affects our standards of beauty, our standards of food and living, everything to emphasize the self, to delineate ourselves from other people, and to give ourselves, yes, superiority. Where on earth is it? There it is. Everyone wants the best, whether it be women or food, in order to feel better than somebody else. And if they're not the best, then they're not treated as well and considered to be not worth respect. To the point that many would not even so much as give someone the dignity of explaining why to the victim that they did it, for they are not considered to be worth the sacrifice of control over them. For when you have to explain yourself to someone, it does empower them to some degree, which certain people are not worthy of. I'm Gabriel Paranias Ackner, and I hope that you've learned something from this description, or this exploration of superiority. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Thank you for listening.